Welcome back to Mystery and Mayhem. If this is your first time here I am hoping you will hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications to know when new videos will be put up. I will be changing up some of the topics I cover so we don't just deal with murderers on this site. Once a week I will bring mythologies and a current issue that is going on, YouTube. This will break up the seriousness of bringing to you serial murders each day. Charles Millis Manson born on November 12, 1934 to November 19, 2017, was an American criminal and musician who led the Manson family, a cult based in California, in the late 1960s. Some of the members committed a series of nine murders at four locations in July and August 1969. In 1971, Manson was convicted of first-degree murder and conspiracy to murder the deaths of seven people including the film actress Sharon Tate. The prosecution contended that, while Manson never directly ordered the murders, his ideology constituted an overt act of conspiracy. Before the murders, Manson had spent more than half of his life in correctional institutions. While gathering his cult following, Manson was a singer-songwriter on the fringe of the Los Angeles music industry, chiefly through a chance association with Dennis Wilson of the Beach Boys, who introduced Manson to record producer Terry Melcher. In 1968, the Beach Boys recorded Manson's song, Cease to Exist, renamed Never Learn Not to Love as a single B-side, but without credit to Manson. Afterward, Manson attempted to secure a record contract through Melcher but was unsuccessful. Manson would often talk about the Beatles, including their eponymous 1968 album. According to Los Angeles County District Attorney, Vincent Bugliosi, Manson felt guided by his interpretation of the Beatles' lyrics and adopted the term, helter-skelter, to describe an impending apocalyptic race war. During his trial, Bugliosi argued that Manson had intended to start a race war, although Manson and others disputed this. Contemporary interviews and trial witness testimony insisted that the Tate-LaBianca murders were copycat crimes intended to exonerate Manson's friend Bobby Beausoleil. Manson himself denied having instructed anyone to murder anyone. Charles Manson was born on November 12, 1934, to 15-year-old Kathleen Mansonbauer Cavender, name Maddox, 1919 1919-1973, at the University of Cincinnati Academic Health Center in Cincinnati, Ohio. He was named Charles Millis Maddox. Manson's biological father appears to have been Colonel Walker Henderson Scott Sr., 1910-1954, of Catlettsburg, Kentucky, against whom Kathleen Maddox filed a paternity suit that resulted in an agreed judgment in 1937. Scott worked intermittently in local mills and had a local reputation as a con artist. He allowed Maddox to believe that he was an army colonel, although Colonel was merely his given name. When Maddox told Scott that she was pregnant, he told her he had been called away on army business. After several months she realized he had no intention of returning. Manson may never have known his biological father. In August 1934, before Manson's birth, Maddox married William Eugene Manson, 1909-1961, laborer at a dry cleaning business. Maddox often went on drinking sprees with her brother Luther, leaving Charles with multiple babysitters. They divorced on April 30, 1937, after William alleged gross neglect of duty by Maddox. Charles retained William's last name, Manson. On August 1, 1939, Luther and Kathleen Maddox were arrested for assault and robbery. Kathleen and Luther were sentenced to five and ten years of imprisonment. Respectively. Manson was placed in the home of an aunt and uncle in McMechan, West Virginia. His mother was paroled in 1942. Manson later characterized the first weeks after she returned from prison as the happiest time in his life. Weeks after Maddox's release, Manson's family moved to Charleston, West Virginia, where Manson continually played truant and his mother spent her evenings drinking. She was arrested for grand larceny, but not convicted. The family later moved to Indianapolis, 
where Maddox met an alcoholic with the last name, Lewis, through Alcoholics Anonymous meetings, and married him. In an interview with Diane Sawyer, Manson said that when he was nine, he set his school on fire. Manson also got in trouble for truancy and petty theft. Although there was a lack of foster home placements, in 1947, at the age of 13, Manson was placed in the Guybalt School for Boys in Terre Haute, Indiana, a school for male delinquents run by Catholic priests. Guybalt was a strict school, where punishment for even the smallest infraction included beatings with either a wooden paddle or a leather strap. Manson ran away from Guybalt and slept in the woods, under bridges, and wherever else he could find shelter. Manson fled home to his mother and spent Christmas 1947 in McMechan, at his aunt and uncle's house. His mother returned him to Guybalt. Ten months later, he ran away to Indianapolis. In 1948, in Indianapolis, Manson committed his first known crime by robbing a grocery store. At first, the robbery was simply to find something to eat. However, Manson found a cigar box containing just over a hundred dollars, and he took the money. He used the money to rent a room on Indianapolis's Skid Row and to buy food. For a time, Manson had a job delivering messages for Western Union in an attempt to live a life free of crime. However, he quickly began to supplement his wages through petty theft. He was eventually caught, and in 1949 a sympathetic judge sent him to Boys Town, a juvenile facility in Omaha, Nebraska. After four days at Boys Town, he and fellow student Blackie Nielsen obtained a gun and stole a car. They used it to commit two armed robberies on their way to the home of Nielsen's uncle in Peoria, Illinois. Nielsen's uncle was a professional thief, and when the boys arrived he allegedly took them on as apprentices. Manson was arrested two weeks later during a nighttime raid on a Peoria store. In the investigation that followed, he was linked to his two earlier armed robberies. He was sent to the Indiana Boys School, a strict reform school. At the school, other students allegedly raped Manson with the encouragement of a staff member, and he was repeatedly beaten. He ran away from the school 18 times. While at the school, Manson developed a self-defense technique he later called the insane game. When he was physically unable to defend himself, he would screech, grimace, and wave his arms to convince aggressors that he was insane. After several failed attempts, he escaped with two other boys in February 1951. The three escapees were robbing filling stations while attempting to drive to California in stolen cars when they were arrested in Utah. For the federal crime of driving a stolen car across state lines, Manson was sent to Washington. D.C.'s National Training School for Boys On arrival, he was given aptitude tests which determined that he was illiterate but had an above-average IQ of 109. His caseworker deemed him aggressively antisocial. On a psychiatrist's recommendation, Manson was transferred in October 1951 to Natural Bridge Honor Camp, a minimum security institution. His aunt visited him and told administrators she would let him stay at her house and would help him find work. Manson had a parole hearing scheduled for February 1952. However, in January, he was caught raping a boy at knife point. Manson was transferred to the Federal Reformatory in Petersburg, Virginia. There he committed a further eight serious disciplinary offenses. Three involving homosexual acts. He was then moved to a maximum security reformatory at Chillicothe, Ohio, where he was expected to remain until his release on his 21st birthday in November 1955. Good behavior led to an early release in May 1954, to live with his aunt and uncle in McMechan. In January 1955, Manson married a hospital waitress named Rosalie Jean Willis. Around October, about three months after he and his pregnant wife arrived in Los Angeles in a car he had stolen in Ohio, Manson was again charged with a federal crime for taking the vehicle across state lines. After a psychiatric evaluation, he was given five years probation. 
Manson's failure to appear at a Los Angeles hearing on an identical charge filed in Florida resulted in his March 1956 arrest in Indianapolis. His probation was revoked, and he was sentenced to three years' imprisonment at Terminal Island in Los Angeles. While Manson was in prison, Rosalie gave birth to their son, Charles Manson Jr. During his first year at Terminal Island, Manson received visits from Rosalie and his mother, who were now living together in Los Angeles. In March 1957, when the visits from his wife ceased, his mother informed him Rosalie was living with another man. Less than two weeks before a scheduled parole hearing, Manson tried to escape by stealing a car. He was given five years probation and his parole was denied. Manson received five years parole in September 1958, the same year in which Rosalie received a decree of divorce. By November, he was pimping a 16-year-old girl and was receiving additional support from a girl with wealthy parents. In September 1959, he pleaded guilty to a charge of attempting to cash a forged U.S. Treasury check, which he claimed to have stolen from a mailbox, the latter charge was later dropped. He received a 10-year suspended sentence and probation after a young woman named Leona, who had an arrest record for prostitution, made a tearful plea before the court that she and Manson were deeply in love and would marry if Charlie were freed. Before the year's end, the woman did marry Manson, possibly so she would not be required to testify against him. Manson took Leona and another woman to New Mexico for purposes of prostitution, resulting in him being held and questioned for violating the Mann Act. Though he was released, Manson correctly suspected that the investigation had not ended. When he disappeared in violation of his probation, a bench warrant was issued. An indictment for violation of the Mann Act followed in April 1960. Following the arrest of one of the women for prostitution, Manson was arrested in June in Laredo, Texas, and was returned to Los Angeles. For violating his probation on the check cashing charge, he was ordered to serve his 10-year sentence. Manson spent a year trying unsuccessfully to appeal the revocation of his probation. In July 1961, he was transferred from the Los Angeles County Jail to the United States Penitentiary at McNeil Island, Washington. There, he took guitar lessons from Barker, Carpus gang leader Alvin, Creepy, Carpus and obtained from another inmate a contact name of someone at Universal Studios in Hollywood, Phil Kaufman. Among his fellow prisoners during this time was Danny Trejo, who participated in several hypnosis sessions. According to Jeff Gwynn's 2013 biography of Manson, his mother moved to Washington State to be closer to him during his McNeil Island incarceration working nearby as a waitress. Although the Mann Act charge had been dropped, the attempt to cash the Treasury check was still a federal offense. Manson's September 1961 annual review noted he had a, a tremendous drive to call attention to himself, an observation echoed in September 1964. In 1963, Leona was granted a divorce. During the process, she alleged that she and Manson had a son, Charles Luther. According to a popular urban legend, Manson auditioned unsuccessfully for the Monkees in late 1965. This is refuted by the fact that Manson was still incarcerated at McNeil Island at that time. In June 1966, Manson was sent for the second time to Terminal Island in preparation for early release.